Okay, so I, I finally decided today what I wanted to do for my next demo, and um, it's actually probably going to take me a while to put it together because uh, it's going to be kind of involved. But one of the things that is going to involve uh, is going to be switches. And I thought it might be cool to just do like a super quick little demo on just the concept of switches and we'll get more involved in it in in the demo that I'm thinking of doing next. But you know, we we've got, you know, we've started to create these little libraries for ourselves of all these various materials and maps, etc. that that we can make and reuse and it would be really nice, for example, to switch between them uh, for the end user. So hopefully, you know, th this isn't going to take very long. And I, like I said, we're not going to, I'm not even going to publish stuff out. I'm just going to show you how these things work. And we'll get into more detail on them in my upcoming sort of large demo. So let's start with a new substance. And we're going to make a PBR material and we'll call it switches. Uh, now there's <clears throat> basically three different flavors of switches. Well, two and a half really. You have material switch, a multi switch, and a regular switch. Um, these two guys are going to be dealing with grayscale, so I'm going to pull these two out. Uh, the multi switch color and multi switch and the regular, you know, these they're basically the same thing except one deals in color, one deals in grayscale. Um, there's really no difference beyond that. As the name would imply, what these things do is they switch between two different uh, textures or material, well, two different textures. Um, and the material switch will switch between materials. Um, so let's find some textures to switch between. Um, what I'm going to go for here is kind of landmass versus liquid. So we'll have one one material switch dealing with the quote unquote liquids and one material switch dealing with land masses. And I'm thinking we're going to get a, you know, like we can choose, you know, amongst the land masses too. So it gives a little bit more functionality. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to go in here and pull out some of these. We, we've made these before where, you know, these are maps that we've made with, um, with our own shapes. And then, you know, we splatter them out and do, you know, do all that kind of stuff. So I've saved this now and I can now reuse it here. Uh, let's pull out some other ones. It's another recent one I made. And let's do that. Okay. It doesn't really matter what we use here. So we have, let's start with the, the plane switch. Plane switch will switch between two different maps. And again, if you're using the color or the grayscale accordingly. It's a Boolean thing. So you've got one of two choices. And that's pretty straightforward. Now, if you've got an end user here, um, you know, rather than expose it as true false, what you can go and do is you could create a new input parameter and let's call this switch. And we create a Boolean. And then here, if you create your own input parameter, then you can actually label it. So our true input is flow rock one. And our second one is, what are you called there? Splatter ground one. So now if we go into the preview mode, when your end user is using, and instead of just doing true false, you can actually, uh, let's hook it up first. That probably will work better. So when you go into the preview, after having hooked it up, 
you can change it and it's got this nice little name on it as opposed to true false which is meaningless in this particular situation uh, okay multi switch same idea only now you can add more than one more than two so now obviously because it's more than two uh, it's not boolean isn't going to work for it so let's call this multi switch now and it's going to want an integer so if we actually go and look at the uh, parameters for multi switch we have two things here we have input number and input selection right now if I switch between 1 and 2 it's doing exactly what was happening with the other one input number tells you how many inputs you want so I mean you could have 20 in here I mean it would be pretty inefficient because remember the more work you make one of these nodes do the slower things go but uh, as far as I know there's no limit on it uh, we're only going to need three and now that allows us to put this other mask in here and now we can switch between one two and three now if you go up beyond that again it's not going to work so we're going to go into our input parameters and we're going to make another one oh did I I already made that. I, I changed the old one. Okay, so we're going to have the maximum here as three. And we're going to set the clamp to true. So it's not going to let people go beyond three. Now, let's preview this. All right. So I can go ahead. Oh, did I? You know what I did? I forgot to do it again. Okay. Let's try that. There we go. Okay. So if we go into multi switch, we go into preview, we have one, two, three. If I'm an end user, yeah, I guess this is acceptable, but how much cooler would it be if we created a drop down list? So now, it, again, this is crazy easy. Um, this number in here corresponds to the input number. So by default, it's giving you zero, but you really want the number one because this is looking for the number one. So that's the number we're going to put in there. This is just a label. So I can call it flow rock one. and I can add another item. So the next one I'm going to have is number two. So we're talking about this input. So we, that's splatter ground one. And then I'm going to add a third one that's corresponding to the number three. And that is rock two, rocks two. So now when we go into our preview our preview we have a drop down list where it's a lot easier for our end user to figure out what they want to do the other thing about this is this little check mark here is what sets your default and that is all there is to that uh, the second thing we're going to look at are material switches. And again, uh, this is only this is limited to Boolean. You can only do it with two. Now, in the material switch itself, again, this is really straightforward. Um, you have two versions 
of these. It's currently set to this. You can change this around. Number two, number two, and set number one. These channels, so I we don't, we're not going to use a diffuse, so I'm going to set that to false. Uh, we're going to have a base color. We're going to have a normal. We're going to we're not going to have a specular, so I'm going to set that to false. Uh, we're going to do the ground bits first, so they're not going to have an emissive. We're not going to use glossiness. We are going to use roughness. We've got metallic, no specular, no ambient occlusion, height, opacity. That all seems to be good. So we've got our basic things right here. Now, all we need to do is go into our library and pick out two materials that we have. So let's come in here and pick out some. How did this? Is this I don't know. That's some weird thing that it made. Um. Okay. No. What am I looking at here? Oh, there it is. No, it's a different rock one. Yeah, I don't know where that stupid material. Oh, here it is. Um. Okay. Hook it up. Hook it up. It knows where it needs to go. And then you just double check. I mean, sometimes, like if if we, for instance, wanted to add an ambient occlusion, all we would have to do is go into the material switch. and add the ambient occlusion. Now all of a sudden you've got this extra node and you can hook it up. This one doesn't have it. This one doesn't really need it. So I'm just not going to have it. Um, we'll get more involved in the sort of minutia of this because once you, when we start doing the bigger demo, because once you start combining these things, especially in terms of heights, um, it's perfectly okay. Like for example, if you know what, let's let's get to it a little bit later. Okay, so this is our first set of materials, and what we're going to do is we're going to get a blend node. So we're going to use this as our mask, and then we have one, two, three, four, five different things that we need for our output. So just to make things easier, I'm going to copy this with Control C, and I'm going to make one, two, three, four more copies. And I'm just going to line them up, nice and easy. So everything's all matchy, and then I just start drawing noodles. Okay, so this is the ground. So I'm going to have my white areas here as the ground. So I want this set up top. And just make sure that I'm doing it to the correct thing. So base color, normal, roughness, which I didn't change. Normally I switch those and I'm not going to bother right now because I'm trying to keep things quick and it'll keep it in the same order too. So we got metallic is next. And height is last. Now we're just going to go and repeat this for the second material that we want to go into this node. So we're going to get another switch, another material switch. And now we're going to get our quote unquote liquids. So I liked that lava that we made the last time. And I think I put it in emissives. Yep. And then we have water. So again, you know, I'm going to look at these. Um, I'm going to keep this real simple. Again, we're not even going to publish this out. So I'm not going to worry about things like opacity, et cetera, et cetera. We are going to have to add, though, an emissive here. Um, so let's go through our material switch. We do not need a diffuse. We're going to have a base color, normal, no specular. We are going to have an emissive. Uh, we don't need glossiness. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so that hooked up correctly. 
I never bothered putting a color in the base color here, so it went ahead and added a gradient map for me. When it's we're not really using it, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we're going to hook this one up, and this has got. Sometimes you got to do that. So we have our basic things here. Did we make an emissive up here yet? No, we didn't. So let's make an emissive up here because we're going to need that. And we're going to need to add another one of these guys for the emissive node. So again, we're going to put that mask in there. This one doesn't have, this will never emit because that's not how we want it. So what we can always do in here is um, just do that because uh, it's always going to be black. And then down here, we can take our emissive. Oh, let's do it the other way around. Um, take our emissive channel and put it in there. And then we just hook up all the other guys. So we have base color. I always do that. So base color. normal roughness oops roughness metallic and height and here we go and just like Let's bring it. Let's find a spot for you there. So this is my 3D view. Right now it's just a cube. If I want it to show, I'm going to view outputs in 3D view. So this is my material as it stands right now. Obviously we can do all kinds of tweaking. There's no animation in here. So we're not really worried about that right now anyway. So let's take a look at our switches. Um, we have these two are set up as Boolean. I'm, did we even do this one? Okay, no, we didn't. Okay, so I can switch this true false between the ground and the water. So why don't we make our input parameters here. It's one that I made that I didn't use so we'll use that. So we call this ground switch and again we want this to be a boolean and while we're in here um, oh yeah, let's let's do this. So yeah, okay. Right now it's set to what? Because um, this one doesn't. It gives you number one, number two, and I always forget which one's which. Okay, so right now it's on water. So let's take a look and see what this is actually at right now. So water is false. Oh, so we're doing the ground. Sorry. So this number one is false. Number two is true. Number one is false, number two is true. Okay. Really? Okay, well, let's see. Okay, cave rock and green ground. Let's hook that up, see if I got that backwards. You can always change it. Okay, so it's on rock right now. And let's take a look at the preview. So cave rock, green ground. Perfect, that worked out. So we can do the same thing here. 
So we're going to make a water switch, or let's call it liquid switch. And again, we want that to be a Boolean. And we said one was false, so lava flow and water. And because I have absolutely no faith in my own ability to get that right, I'm going to double check it. So liquid switch, lava flow. No, I got that exactly backwards. Let's see, I know myself. Stuff like this, I, I'm like a negative barometer. I always, get, I, I also have trouble with left and right. So um, I, I have to go back in here. Liquid switch. So I'm gonna change this to lava flow. Right, change this to water. Maybe that'll be right. Okay. So it's currently set to water. And now it's lava. Excellent. Okay. Um yeah, that that's really pretty much it. Uh it's this is this is a really nice way of sort of oh yeah and then the let's let's test it all out so we have we have the um we have the two kinds of materials but now we can also go in here and change the kinds of rocks that we have so we can change that and then we can also change it to lava and all kinds of different things going on here. So that was just a little, why aren't you changing? Did we switch you up? Oh, it's just being super slow. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. Um, it's just a little thing about switches and we're gonna be using a lot more of these and we're gonna get into getting this stuff, to, you know, because once you actually get into the nitty gritty of making this material, do what you want it to do, and you've got different heights going on. This doesn't really reflect height map on here, but for example, you know, as this stands right now, let's switch it to lava. I was fooling around with it. Um, where are we? Um, Yeah, like um, when you get into the height right now, the the way it is, pfft, damn it, the, the way it is now is that sometimes the stuff where I have the liquids is higher than the ground because when these maps were originally made, the height maps were were made in relative to other stuff. And you can go back and you can go into the height maps originally, but then anything else that's linked to that note, you know, linked to that file is going to change. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is that in between these two, it's perfectly legitimate to put in levels and other things that will make the, make these particular materials work harmoniously with each other for this particular situation without going back and changing the original. So in a, I guess in a way you're kind of instancing them. It's a, well, an instancing hack. Um, but that's for another demo. So hope, hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you soon.